A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy Lord is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin forgiven. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the book of Revelation. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude which no man could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and whence have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God to serve him night and day within his temple. And he who sits upon the throne will shelter them by his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. You are the light of the world. What a bold declaration. I cannot imagine any of us introducing ourselves with those words. Hello, I'm Mark, the light of the world. Yet that is exactly what Jesus declared about each of us, with neither qualification nor exception. It was not a pep talk or a gentle word of encouragement. It was an admonition. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. In the last two weeks, however, since Beth's utterly unexpected and still unexplained death, it feels very much as if in the passing of a moment, a light has gone out. The disbelief has been unanimous in conversations and correspondence with countless of her colleagues and friends since that day. Unable to grasp the reality of her death, we each held on to her life. She texted with me yesterday. We talked for an hour just this morning. She'd just been emailing me about our committee. We were all together in Medina for the celebration of new ministry. We were just planning the visit from our colleagues in Belize. It was striking how in spite of the isolation of this pandemic time, virtually everyone could recount a very recent connection with her and an emotional unwillingness to let go. Even gathering here this morning, with the familiar words and prayers of the burial office, we struggle to accept our loss. We want another chance to hear her laugh and enjoy her self-deprecating and sharp wit. We want another chance to tell her what a remarkable daughter and friend and colleague and priest she is and how perfect she is in Leo's eyes. We want another chance to ask her advice and find courage in her companionship. We want another chance to thank her for the word of support or comfort or accountability she offered right when we needed to hear it. We want another chance to tell her what Jesus told her, that without doubt, she is the light of the world. In the sermon at Beth and Lydia Bailey's ordination to the diaconate, I described the signature flash sequences of lighthouses that identify them and mark the dangers from which they are intended to protect mariners. They are beacons by which sailors get their bearings and navigate in the dark. Perhaps the most famous lighthouse sequence in this country is that of Minot's Ledge Light in Massachusetts Bay 
just south of Boston Harbor. Every 45 seconds, its white fl light flashes one, four, three. Remembered by mariners longing for home and lovers seeing it from the shore by the number of letters in the words, I love you. One, four, three. This sequence, established in 1894, has for more than a century flashed continuously that promise, I love you. As such, it is an apt description of the vocation of every Christian to proclaim the relentless love of God by which each of us sets her course on the varied seas of life. Beth held on to that image in her own vocation as a Christian and as a priest. She was always quick to remind me of it. In fact, just this Christmas, she gave her father a three foot tall wooden lighthouse equipped with a light that stands by his chair near the fireplace in his living room on Kimberley Road. It is a reminder of God's ceaseless love, even in the darkest of times, and our responsibility and privilege as disciples of Jesus to proclaim it in all that we do and all that we are. On God's behalf, we proclaim one, four, three. I love you by letting our light so shine before others that it might illuminate their belovedness. You are the light of the world. While Beth might not have described herself in those words, that is precisely how she lived. She did not keep her light under a bushel basket, nor did she shine it on herself. Rather, she was a beacon of God's love to others, all others, that they might know that they mattered to God and to her that they were valued beyond their imagining. It defined her relationships with colleagues, friends and strangers alike, and it was a driving force in her formation as a minister of the gospel. Her vocational journey was, by her own description, circuitous and included serving as a teacher in China, a business consultant in Hong Kong, a fair housing and civil rights attorney in the federal government, and a coordinator for the Special Olympics. In an Akron Beacon Journal interview after her ordination to the priesthood, Beth likened her path to the cartoon strip, The Family Circus. She said, it's like when the mom sends Billy to get sugar, and you see these dotted lines that show his path through the neighborhood and how he stops at various places like the teeter-totter to play, and how he eventually gets back with the sugar. That's sort of my journey to the priesthood, she explained. I've made some stops on the way to the priesthood, but God has used each of those stops to prepare me for my destination. At each of those stops and at every one since, Beth collected companions who provided the encouragement and support that led her on. After initial exploration of holy orders in another diocese that did not pan out, it was a group of treasured boarding school friends, her Pelican sisters, whose long experience of her as a beacon of God's confidence in each of them persuaded Beth of God's confidence in her and encouraged her to come home to Ohio and remain available for ordained ministry. They had witnessed how fully she, as much as anyone they knew, had lived into the school prayer. Grant, O Lord, that in all the joys of life, we may never forget to be kind. Help us to be unselfish in friendship, thoughtful of those less happy than ourselves and eager to bear the burdens of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Kind, unselfish, thoughtful, and eager 
to bear the burdens of others. Add to that trustworthy and loyal. These qualities modeled and mandated by Jesus were borne out in all that she did, and they inspired her schoolmates just as they have inspired our better selves. Lizzie Condit, an elementary school teacher who grew up at St. Mark's Shelby, wrote me last week describing how when she was a college student, a member of the Commission on Global and Domestic Mission visited her parish and explained our then developing companion relationship with the Diocese of Belize. She wrote, when I showed interest, he got me in touch with Beth. Originally, the intent was to only send Cedar Hills counselors to Belize. But Beth decided to meet me at Ohio State and get to know me. We went out to lunch a few times, and after getting to know me, she convinced the mission trip committee that I deserved the chance to get to go. She believed in me, a young girl from a small parish. I'm sad to have lost touch with her over the years, but was really touched to find out that she always kept up with my family. She never left my corner, even if I did not realize it. You are the light of the world. Beth let that light shine with uncompromising generosity. Her classmate, Tally Ward Harris, texted me this. She was a dear, lifelong pal who joined me annually in participating in a Christmas project benefiting so many others across the globe. We built a well in Africa, helped construct a school in Guatemala, and most recently, Beth offered up her entire remaining purse bestowed upon her by a former parish and reduced me to tears when I received the Venmo while I was out shopping for necessities to welcome 300 African immigrant families to Portland, Maine. Beth understood a windfall for herself as a windfall for others and quietly gave of herself in ways that most often went unseen by all but God. She was deeply committed to global mission, chairing our diocesan commission, serving as vice chair of the General Convention's Standing Commission on World Mission, traveling to our companion dioceses, creating deep friendships with her counterparts in Belize, and helping establish schools, clinics, and numerous mission projects in Nigeria with her family. In her understanding of God's creation, there was no corner that the light of divine love could not and should not illuminate if we are willing beacons. Serving on committees, commissions, and as a trustee of the diocese, her attention to, to detail was undistracted. She was serious and, and diligent in preparation, committed to accountability in every way, crossing T's, dotting I's, doing the math, and not averse to picking a nit. Early on, I suspected it was the lawyer in her that was being revealed. But I came to see that, in fact, it was the Christian in her that drove her commitment to our being what we claimed to be and doing what we claimed we would do. It was always about doing the right thing for God's children with the gifts God has given us. It was always about our responsibility to be the light to the world. A number of parishioners and colleagues have reported that one of Beth's favorite hymns was, I want to walk as a child of the light. It comes as no surprise, given how she lived and served among us, that she yearned for the light of Jesus to shine in her heart. 
while these days since Beth's death have been dark, in the mystery of God, the light still shines. It shines in our hearts as it shined in and through her heart. And today it shines in our recollecting of our recollection of her unwavering faith, her relentless dedication to God's beloved, and her humble authenticity. Like our treasured sister Beth, you and I are the light of the world, not because of us, but because of God. As with her, it is the light of Christ shining in us and through us that assures friends and strangers that they are loved and treasured. And the resurrection of Jesus proclaims that God's light overcomes all darkness, even that of our greatest and deepest grief, even that of our greatest loss. Today, as we give thanks for all that God has given us through Beth's life and ministry, we pray with her that the light of Christ will shine in our hearts and that we, like Beth, will be more and more fully the light of the world that Jesus declares we are. In closing, it seems only fitting to turn to Beth herself, a child of the light and a beacon of God's love, and give her the last word. In what was her final sermon at St. James Church two Sundays ago, on the wedding at Cana of Galilee, she concluded with an affirmation and challenge so characteristic of her, a declaration of God's unwavering confidence in each of us. She said, as a community seeking the common good, we are the best wine, apart and alone. Let's bring our God-given best to the party and dance till the cows come home. Amen.
Let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Remember your servant Beth, O Lord, according to the favor which you bear to your people, and grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of you, she may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in your heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered, Make us, we pray, deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of life, and let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days, that when we have served you in our generation, we may be gathered to our ancestors, having the testimony of a good conscience, and in the confidence of certain faith, in the comfort of a religious and holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect charity with the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that we may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfast and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those we love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, light is changed, not ended, and when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us speak the peace. Alleluia. God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Beth. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. We seem to give her back to you, O God, who has given her to us. Yet as you did not lose her in giving, so we have not lost her by her return. Not as the world gives do you give, O lover of souls. What you give you do not take away. For what is yours is ours always if we are yours. And life is eternal, and love is immortal, and death is only a horizon, and a horizon is nothing save the limit of our sight. Lift us up, O God, that we may see further. Cleanse our eyes that we may see more clearly. Draw us closer to yourself, that we may know ourselves to be nearer to Beth and all our beloved who are with you. And while your Son prepares a place for us, prepare us for that happy place, that where they are and you are, we too may be, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that in all the joys of life, we may never forget to be kind. Help us to be unselfish in friendship, thoughtful of those less happy than ourselves, and eager to bear the burdens of others. From Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. In the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.